Quebec is truly a unique land in North America. Unique for its geography, its history and its culture, this has given Quebec a bold and exuberant identity. It's gained a reputation as Canada's most romantic and sexy province where people live, work and party in the two major cities of Montreal and Quebec City. Quebec is a combination of the best of France and the best of the English, a region rich in culture, history and an infectious joie de vivre and a place that should be on every Everybody's holiday list. I'm Ben Whitmarsh, and in this podcast, I shall be finding out where to go, where to stay, places to eat, how to get around, and all the vital details you need to know to make your trip to Quebec the best it can be. Now, Quebec, just in case you don't know, is located at the northeastern tip of North America. It's seven times as big as Britain. Its territory extends from the US border to the Arctic Ocean, between Ontario to the west, and New Brunswick and Newfoundland and Labrador to the east. And joining me in my virtual journey, Journey around Quebec is, and I'm going to try and pronounce this right, Rosaline Hubert from Tours in Quebec. Was that remotely it close? It was perfect. Now, was Joie de Vivre, did I say that Joie correctly? Vivre, well? it was perfect. Ah, ça c'est bon. I was considering <laughs> doing the, the whole of this podcast in French, but, uh, you know, we, we tried that and my French was spectacular. You let me down a bit, to be honest, <laughs> Rosaline. So we'll do it in English. Let's start with a bit of history, first of all, if we may. We all know that uh, Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas. Eventually, the Brits came to dominate much of North America, but things were a little bit different on the east of what is now Canada, weren't they? Absolutely. The French came in. <laughs> <laughs> the French came in. Jacques Cartier came, uh, came to uh, Canada in 1534. And then later on in 1608, uh, Samuel de Champlain founded Quebec City. And as you can guess, we will be celebrating the 400th anniversary pretty soon. And how much, uh, how significant has the French influence been in shaping the identity of Quebec? Well, as you can hear, probably with my accent, um, it is still uh, very much present in in the language because most people in Quebec will speak will speak French as a mother tongue, and then they learn English, of course. But we still have cafe society. We like to uh, sit in the cafes and look at people passing by. We like to take long sh- lun- long lunch hour breaks, um, and we enjoy life. We enjoy good food. We even improve the art of cheese making and bread making. And we'll talk about the food and the cafe society in just a few moments. But stay, staying with, with all things French, do, do people in Quebec think of themselves as having French traits, if you like? Mm, I, I wouldn't say French traits. I would say people consider themselves as Québécois. Ooh, explain. What's the difference? Well, it's this mixture of uh, French, uh, French culture and North American uh, way of life. Do you think it's worth brushing up on your French? What important phrases would you recommend? Well... As you know, Quebec, uh, as I told you earlier, Quebec, uh, Quebecers speak English. So, of course, but as in any, as, as anybody who travels, it's always good to learn a few words in the, the language of the country you're visiting. So if you come up to people and say bonjour, for example, or uh, how are you, comment ça va, uh, people will probably will appreciate it, but they will probably switch immediately to English, knowing that it is your language, just to make you feel comfortable. You mean even with my impeccable French accent, Absolutely. they'd know I was English? Absolutely. Even, even when I say bonjour, mon petit chou-fleur. <laughs> Absolutely, the cauliflower. Absolutely, yes. see, I think that's <laughs> always a, a winning French Absolutely, phrase. Absolutely, you know, and humour is always a very, very good would, way would to get bonjour, to people. Would bonjour mon petit chouffleur work in Quebec? It would make people laugh a lot, yes. That's all I need to do. <laughs> now, it, it, do you think it is that French influence that, that makes Quebec such a romantic place? Absolutely. It's a, the French uh, way of life, the French joie de vivre and the French warmth and the, the taste for good things and uh, enjoying life. I, I would say that makes it very romantic. Apart from the architecture, of course, which has a strong French uh, French influence, it's still, uh, still very present, yes. Now, Montreal, if, of course, that's uh, the, the hub of the province, if you like. When people get there, what places should they be checking out? Well, of course, Montreal will be where you would land. So uh, you, would, you, would, you would spend at least two or three days, I would say, in the city. Uh, you would look for the different uh, different areas of the city. Montreal is a city made of the combination of various neighborhoods. So mainly the old city would be your first uh, play, the play, the first place you would visit. And it's full of little boutique hotels where you would like to uh, settle down for a couple of nights and enjoying the, the good restaurants in that area. There's also a, a cycling path in that area where they where you can uh, do either cycling or uh, rollerblading. Now, what about places to eat in Montreal? You were talking about the food earlier on. Where should we go? Well, there are different, you know, the food is good in Montreal in general. So you'll find, you know, neighborhood cafes with very cheap but high quality food, as well as the five star uh, Michelin, for example, or Relais Chateau, uh, a restaurant in the old uh, in the old uh, city. 
Now, uh, re- regarding dishes and things like that, are there any like speciality dishes that one should try when you're over Absolutely. there? Absolutely. In uh, in Montreal, uh, first of all, you would like to taste the uh, what we call the smoked meat sandwich, which is made of uh, cured and salted beef. And this is really a fam- famous uh, old Montreal tradition. And also the um, bagels, the, ba- the Montreal bagels are really different to mm. the uh, the bagels in, in New York. So Why these, is that? Well, they are, they are l- less um, salty. salty and less... Less thick. Oh, you know, okay. You know, and they, a bit more classy. And, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and you'll have them with smoked salmon. And <laughs> this is this is absolutely fantastic. Yes. Now, now, when it comes to eating out, us Brits, we we get dreadfully embarrassed when it comes to tipping. What, what is a de rigueur? In de rigueur Quebec? would be to leave to leave ten percent. As as you would as you would do here, I, I, I presume. Yeah. So this is the standard. Yeah, okay, so we got no, nothing to worry about too. Nothing much. Nothing to worry about. Easy to work out. Ten percent as well. Easy to work out. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Now, what about places to stay in Montreal? Well, Montreal offers you know a, the whole uh, the whole variety of hotels uh, from the five star standard you know classical hotels belonging to uh, to the world renowned chains to uh, as I said earlier the uh, little boutique hotels in the in the city that are lots of character and most of the time um, built in old uh, buildings in the old city w- where the architecture is really mm. an important feature of the of the hotel and of course the whole range of little bed and breakfast very m- more cozy and uh, on a smaller scale so all kind of budgets are catered for them, absolutely really. yeah, yeah yeah now when it comes to getting around what's the best way to get around montreal well i wouldn't rent a car of course montreal has a very good uh, public transport system but you would like in, if you're in the summer you like to do the, um, the inline skating or even the biking uh, all around the city montreal is famous for its biking uh, network um, so it, this is something you would like but it's also a very walkable city mm. so you can easily go from one district to the other just by walking and then it's a perfect way to discover the city as well How big is Montreal actually when you compare it to like a city like London or something Montreal like is the greater Montreal is over 3 million Habitants, but yeah. the city itself would be a, a million point two. So it'd be that's that's a good walkable size, really. It's well, the, the heart of Montreal yeah. would be walkable. Yes, absolutely. Now, um, what about getting to other places in Quebec? Quebec City, for example, how easy is it to get there from Montreal? Well, from Montreal, you need to hire a car, of course. Uh, you could you could take the train, but if you want to go further than Quebec, if you want to spend more time, I would suggest you hire a car and you drive along the Saint Lawrence River to Quebec City, which is about a three-hour drive. Mm. And if you take the side roads, side roads, it could be fantastic just following the St. Lawrence River, which is majestic. Incidentally, so we don't get caught speeding, what, what's the kind of top speed? Uh, in Normally, the speed limit is 100, but it's tolerated up to 120 kilometres. Kilometres an hour. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> kilometres, yes. Goodness me, yes, that is yes, important. Yeah. Yes, Let, absolutely. British people with speeding <laughs> tickets. Now, um, Quebec City, of course, it offers something completely different to yep. anywhere in North America, doesn't it? Absolutely. Quebec City is the only walled city north of Mexico. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it is famous, of course, for its uh, fairy tale Chateau Frontenac overlooking the St. Lawrence River. It's cobblestone streets. It's very, very well preserved. And the, the people of Quebec are very, very proud of their city. So they take very, very good care of it. I must be honest, I haven't really heard, I've heard of Montreal, I've heard of Quebec yeah. and everything, but I haven't really heard of Quebec City. So is, it, is it like a hidden jewel almost? It's a hidden jewel. You would be, we were, you would be surprised that sometimes it's it's used, uh, the architecture is so French in Quebec City mm. that sometimes it is used as a French uh, city in films, for example. Really? Yes, absolutely. Can you give me any examples of the films off Catch the top of your head? Catch me if you can. Really? Was yes, it, was it? it was in Quebec the City. The Leonardo yes. DiCaprio. Film. Absolutely, with Tom Hanks, yes. Yeah, I can yeah, film that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what are the must-do things in Quebec City, would you say? Well, the must-do things would be just, first of all, walk around the city, just to enjoy the, 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 the feeling of the place, having a look at the architecture, um, discovering the little side streets, stop for a coffee somewhere at, 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 on a sidewalk cafe. Uh, you could take also the ferry. There's a ferry crossing the river, which takes about 15 minutes. From And from the other side, you have this fantastic and classical view of, of Quebec. And very close by, at maybe just an hour, an hour and a half drive, you have the fantastic nature. You're in the mm. complete wilderness, so you can go and do some hiking, canoeing in the in the, in the the summer you can go whale watching also in uh, further east from Quebec and in the winter well everything is available dog sledding snowshoeing snowmobiling downhill skiing and you can even get married in the ice hotel so that's 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 about Quebec City not really things you can do in England Let, let's Not be honest really.